Thank you. Hi, I'm Charlie Nanda, Chair of the Needham Council for Arts and Culture with co-chair Bala. She'll be in here about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to first confirm that all members or persons are here. And um, when I call your name, please respond. We're looking for Sharon Breitbart. I am here. Hello, Sharon. Elizabeth Cook. Here, present. Hello, Elizabeth. Julia Gould. Here. Samantha Hoff. Here. Gail Lustig. I am here. Betsy Mullane. I am here. Hi, Betsy. Uh, Bala is not on yet. She'll be here soon. Um, I'm Charlie Nanda. Heather Simmons. Here. Hi, Heather. And Joni Shockett. I am here. And Kareen is going to join us as an attendee and listen in. And I see her name there. Um, great. So let me just do this annoying um, intro quickly. This meeting is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the st current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible place. I lost the second page. Um, the order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. For this meeting, the Needham Council for Arts and Culture is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The meeting will then be posted on the town's YouTube channel for posterity. Um, so the usual meeting business rules, um, if you're sharing your screen, be careful, mute your microphone. Um, people can see and hear forever on YouTube what you are showing in your background as well. Um, we'll do hand raising, but I think there's a small group of ours that we can do regular hand or the little icon, we're manageable size. But Julia, do we have a quorum? Yes. We have a quorum. Okay, so this is our fun grants meeting. Hi everybody, I hope you really enjoyed going through those 35 grants and that amazing Google form. We'll, we'll chat about, um, the grants are actually at the bottom of the agenda. And um, so this will be part one, and then we'll have part two on December 14th. Um, if you see in your beautiful agenda, there's a gorgeous little chart here for all of our meetings. So put them in your calendars now for the next year. Um, so you know when the next meeting is and you don't have to text me and say, hey, Charlie, it's been like two months, when's our meeting? Cause it's been a while. It felt, it felt strange not seeing you all in November. Um, we did a lot since then. We had a town fair, which was amazing. Um, it was so well attended. Amy did a great job getting tables and organizing all of the town's folks. Um, and we had some awesome volunteers. Heather and Anne came and um, Sharon was there and we did fun art projects that were totally well received. And people thought we maybe had art classes because we were so amazing and they wanted to sign up for art classes for their kids, but that wasn't really the case. Um, and then um, the other thing is Anne's husband was there as well. And I'm really sad to say that he's passed away. And so Anne has stepped down from the board. Um, if you wanna reach out to her and say hi, it feels very informal not having her here anymore or having some sort of goodbye. Um, so if you wanna reach out to her and say, say hi, I'm sure she'd be happy to see you. Um, and then, um, so the, that's, I think, what's happened in the last couple months. Um, the, we don't have any minutes to go over yet, Julia, so I think, right, so the next meeting we'll maybe have two months to catch up on. Everybody will have some fun. Um, and then Sam and I did some fun financial reporting that we submitted with the Mass Cultural Council and the town accountant, um, which was an awesome um, instructional meeting. So Sam's going to talk to us a little bit about a treasury update. Go for it, Sam. Hey, everyone. So you may have to keep me in line, Gail, if I mess up or, <laughs> or anything since it's my first time, but. Um, oh, yeah. Yay. So, yeah. So I'm like, 
think, yeah, I'm like, let me know if I mess up anything, but I think I have it down. Um, so first thing that I wanted to just update on, I guess, is that we were allocated, um, we have $8,000, as you probably saw in the email, out of 35000 that we requested. Um, so that's super exciting. And uh, the next thing that I, I'm, my face is going to turn colors. Do you want me to share my screen or can I just talk through it? What did you typically do, Gail? Um, you can just talk through it. Okay, cool. Um, so for our um, ending year end, we ended um, June 30th as our fiscal year end. And we carried over into this year $6,279. And um, from that, we have an update where we're at as well um, in our two accounts. We have two different accounts. Um, we've spent a little bit money of money on like signs and I think the paint supplies and things like that since uh, June 30th. So currently we're at $4,311.52. Uh, other things that I should cover. Do you want me to go into the stuff that was submitted on the MCC form or? Go ahead, Gail. Yeah, the only comment, great job, Sam. Thanks. Covered everything, thank you. Um, just to be clear, so that doesn't include this year's allocation, correct? Correct, okay. the 4,000, yes, it does not. Okay, perfect, no, that's great. And thanks for managing that and figuring out what's in which account because I know it's been a challenge so great job thank you definitely thank you yeah I think my my only question or what I wanted to bring up was that so we have forty three hundred dollars to use for our own purposes which could be used towards grants I guess if we wanted so we could add some to this at this point I guess um is that you think that's true Sam and Gail we could add money to this yeah. or have we already been allocated the 8,000 we have to stick to that? No, we can add money to the 8,000. Okay. Um, we have to vote on it. Yeah. Um, I, think, there. I think when we do the voting meeting in December, it'd be good to see like, are they people we really, really wanna give money to or do we wanna keep in reserve for future town projects, things like that? Yeah. Um, but now that we've transferred the second account into our reporting to um, MCC, it's available for grants. Because if you look at the annual report, mm -hmm. it'll say this is the, like Sam, you should see the final dollar amount of what's available for grants. It should be the four plus the eight, I think. Okay, so it's, it's potential. And we'll talk more about some financial things in the next sections too. Um, but that's good. Thanks, Sam. That was awesome. So the next area in our agenda is a public art update, which is really exciting. Um, it's one of our objectives for the year. I'm sad to say that Storefronts Needham is now kaput at the moment. We have moved out of the two storefronts that we had that were really successful. Um, the artists were amazing at getting out within like 48 hours. So I think it really showed how um, flexible artists can be and how like successful that being in a storefront space can be. Um, we're still looking for more spaces. Um, so, and those two groups would be happy to go back into them. Um, but that's where that's at, right? That pro program is at right now. Um, for the mural, um, Joni has, is the lead on that. And she's been writing some amazing, um, she's been working on a call. She's been working on a fundraising template and like a one pager. And so the next steps would be for the public art committee to kind of discuss actually the next steps. The location is still not decided yet. They're kind of being slow on that. So, um, I mean, my recommendation would be to move, on, move forward with looking for artists and building the call. Um, maybe looking at, at the backup location. Um, there is some ARPA funding that's coming to the town. The town of Needham has seven to $8 million for the American Rescue Plan Act funding. Um, Amy, as the economic development director has requested about $10,000 towards um, a mural and 
towards a cultural festival for next year. And we'll see if that comes through. If that comes through, there's possibility that some of that money could go towards that mural. We probably would need more than that. And we need to do some fundraising, which I know Betsy is raring to go on. Um, so we need a boilerplate letter. And so I think that would be the next steps getting banging heads together on that. What do you think, Joni, anything else to add? Um, I have found a couple of more artists that I will add to the thing, to the um, Google Doc. And one of them I'm really excited about. So now I'm really excited to move forward on this. Um, who was finding out about the landlord for the space in the Heights? Yeah, Amy's been really working hard on okay. chasing them down. Go for it. Yeah, Amy. unfortunately, I'm not having um, luck hearing back, but it's actually on my to-do list um, okay. this week. So I'm going to follow up again. Persistence. Yeah, there's one, they touched base once and said they needed to check in with all the businesses, um, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't say no, and they seemed very open to the idea. I think it's just, um, unfortunately, a situation where there's just a lot of communications that need to go out to um, other tenants that are actually national brands. So having to go through the um, chain probably to the national offices. So um, I'm going to be persistent and continue to follow up, but I, I just wrote myself a note. And I'm going to follow up again this week. Okay. Yes, and, who, and who else? Um, I would love to go over some of these artists with anybody who's interested in learning more about them and wants to talk to me or work on them, work with me on this. Did somebody say yet that they did want to do this? Yeah, I, I know I did, but I also think okay. that honestly, I would like to take a vote with the group on whether we think that this should be a group decision or a committee decision. I actually think it would be great. Like this is a big, big project. And if we're all gonna be selling it, asking for money, I think we should all feel invested in choosing the art and choosing what we're doing. That's just my personal opinion. I, I don't no, think I we should split into a small committee. I think we should all see all of the submissions. And thank you, Joni, for like doing all the hard work on that to get us list started. But I feel like everybody should have buy-in because then we'll feel invested in raising the money for it. I agree completely. My, my initial idea of this was that we would whittle down a list of about 11 to maybe mm -hmm. four or five, and then everybody would, that makes you sense. know, that was, that was, I don't think, I agree with you completely. It's too big a deal to do by committee, but I think the preliminary work to say, you know, this one isn't really where we want to be, or this one's way out of our price league and et cetera, um, I think. I'd love to help with that. Okay, good. And I think somebody else, Heather, did you raise your hand? Yeah. We have a committee that, that includes Heather, me, Gail, Joni, and Bala also wants okay. to do some of the lead work on this too. Um, managing a public art piece of this size and a call, I think um, we've done in committee before with the art box and there's a lot of writing and there's a lot of planning. So it's right. some, some management, but I think at every point we would come back to the council yeah. for uh, agreement because this is going to be our biggest project mm -hmm. that we've probably ever done in our history. Um, and I think it need does, I agree, Gail, it needs everybody's buy-in. I agree. Um, yeah, remembering that, I mean, I want to help, but also remember I can't renew after June. So I'll yeah. do what I can until then. Okay, um, and then um, there's one other potential project that um, we were approached by a, a gentleman who is interested in street art and doing a street art project with his son. He uh, proposed, um, there's a project in Cambridge where there's an area where people um, basically do street art graffiti work um, and it's an ongoing space that gets, um, it's kind of like a conversation. So Joni and I were actually speaking about this as well. Um, um, there was one mural that was done along the rail trail. And so there's an idea of potentially creating a project where it's a street art name project where people, this was kind of concept and this is something that's all, also to be discussed, but um, what's your name? and um, would be kind of like the concept behind it. So artists would be um, 
tasked with writing names and in a graffiti style on this um, areas. Uh, the, there's a couple panels on the rail trail. I think the rail trail maybe designed three and then there's a lot more to go. And so the concept also would include young students engaging them in being ambassadors of the space and um, sort of having um, it be an educational um, project that engages students in a space. Um, and so it would have to also have a lead um, designer on it. So that's kind of in the beginning stages of an idea. Um, I like that. There's been a lot of different um, discussions about people wanting to do murals like in the, the tunnel, there's potential to do it one in the tunnel of the MBTA and Needham Youth and Family Services is working on that one because there's some graffiti that keeps getting painted there that they wanna have it repainted. So that's a project idea um, that's in um, for everybody to talk about, think about. Um, the rail trail fence has a lot more spaces on it um, and it is getting some graffiti along it. Um, and there seems to be um, people who are interested in doing more murals around town that are um, not just done by a professional artist, but done, you know, had have community engagement. So um, that was what we were approached on. So that would have to be discussed as well. Uh, do you guys like that idea or is that not something anybody's interested in? Yeah, there, I think there's a lot to work out. I feel out. like it's over committing. Like, I love the idea. I think it can happen possibly without us. I, I think we, you know, are we over committing? I mean, if there's somebody that's really passionate about it, maybe they can work on it, but. Just, I, I don't so see it as a high impact, you know, impacting us a lot other than setting it up, perhaps putting an introduction. And I, I've actually found hmm some information and some things that I used to teach from about about a name. And if we could put that maybe laminated and, and on the fence, that would give people the idea of doing it. I think it's still sort of in the exploratory phase. Yeah. We have to connect with Needham Youth and Family Services, see if that space is even available, if they're um, using it um, or have plans for it. So I, th I think it would be in that step, but the Public Art Committee could talk about that one as well. Um, yeah, so that, that was all, that was it for public art. Did anybody else have any comments before we move on? Okay, um, the next area is a recruitment update. So along those lines, um, we the select board finally has been interviewing um, candidates. So there was maybe four candidates on the list. Um, we've had two drop out, Sarah J dropped out, and then Kat Parnell, someone else who had reached out has dropped out. There's two potential, Kareen is going to be um, approved on the November 23rd agenda, yay, it's only been six months. And then there's another potential person who may come to this meeting today um, uh, and find out more about the NCAC. Um, so there, that's a fourth person. Um, but reach out to your constituents. I think the next time interviews will happen will be kind of like in six months. So um, that uh, you can set the groundwork for that. Um, Kristen is going to come back, I think, maybe next year. She's a little overextended at the time, and she's working for the Needham High School at the moment. So um, she has to do some more steps of conflicts of interest before she can come back on it as well. So she just needs a little more time for that which is a bummer. Um, so that's for recruitment. And then um, if anybody doesn't have any questions about that, we can move on to the municipal funding request, which is a really exciting topic. Okay, I don't see any hands. So in Amy Halston is working on our municipal funding request. So we talked in the last few meetings about doing, uh, requesting a budget line from the town. Um, Amy came back with some advice from the town that um, we should ask for $25,000 over three years, which is um, basically works out to matching our um, allocation from the state budget 100%. Basically, we, get, we, get, we got $7,800 this year, so it's a little bit more. 
So um, I know that we had said matching at the last meeting and, but this is a little bit more. And I know, I, th I think a couple of people had said, ask for a little bit more, but so this is the recommendation, $25,000 over three years. Um, and it would be, um, we would talk, talk about how, um, what percentage we wanna use towards public art projects, what percentage we wanna use towards grants. The town meeting is in January, is that right, uh, Amy, when the decision is being made or? No, actually town meeting is in May, but the budget process actually began several weeks ago. So it will land in front of the finance committee in January for January. discussion and review of that. So um, a representative from the NCAC should be prepared to be available to go to the finance committee to speak on behalf of it and advocate for it. Okay, so so there, the, there is a timeline of January. Bala, Julia, and I and Sam worked on a document, a municipal funding request document that's like a fancy, shiny thing with a bunch of numbers on it um, that we can review at our next meeting or share. And um, it, it kind of is trying to tell the story, make the case for why we need the funding. But um, if anybody wants to discuss the amount, um, we can do that now, or we can make a motion to approve because um, we all need to be on board to vote for requesting $25,000 over the next three years as a municipal funding request. Does anyone want to make a motion or does anyone we want have to, to vote to ask for money? I, yes, we need to vote because we need to all be sort of on board with the right amount. So it's basically like the council agreeing that we do want to have this funding um, I don't so what know. are we asking? So we're asking for the money. What does the proposal look like? If we're voting on the proposal, I want to know what it looks uh, like. The proposal is for the funding amount. And then we would decide when we, uh, further down the line what the money would go towards. It would basically be putting $25,000 in our budget for the next three years to spend as we see fit on public art or grants or any of our um, programming. Okay, I guess I'm trying to understand if I'm on the finance committee and someone says, can I have $25,000? I want something that tells me why. That's what I'm asking. We have that, we'll, we can send it around. It's a PDF. Okay. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. So I just well, wanna say that- Before we vote, I don't wanna vote until we see that. Yeah. Can you share your screen if you have it? Yeah, let me pull it up one second. I just want to mention that a, a vote from the entire committee is is very symbolic and basically saying that we are all behind this and support this and, and we're asking for your support as well. Go for it, Heather. I see your hand. Quickly, is it unreasonable to ask for more than that? Because once we ask for that amount, we're going to be locked into it for three years, right? Yes. Um, I'm not sure it's unreasonable, but this was the recommendation. Um, I and I also, I would, I, I know matching what we've had before seems reasonable. Asking for more um, seems, I, I, I don't know how to choose a number to be honest because we've never had any funding before. So matching seemed right to me. Um, and this is what the town recommended that they, um, and I'm not sure, Amy, if you could talk to um, where the number, the recommended number came from, really. Sure, so, um, so what Julia has up on the screen here is, is, the, um, is the handout or that was put together that it is, is terrific in, in articulating you know, why the funding is, is needed and, and how it would be used. Um, so that actually, I had to copy and paste and put in a much less um, attractive form, which is called a DSR-5 form that goes to the town. And basically this is going to be a warrant article. This is seen as sort of pilot funding for um, the NCAC because there's been no town funding allocated specifically for this committee before. The um, recommendation was to have it be a warrant article to ask for $25,000 to use over the course of three years. So basically um, moving forward after that three-year period, it would be then something that would be incorporated into 
the operating budget for the town. But again, this is sort of a, a pilot program to show that there's money being allocated and, and how the um, committee is actually going to utilize it. So it's, again, that was a recommendation rather than putting it in as a line item in the town budget, having it be a warrant article pilot program for three years. And then after the end of the three years, you come back and you say, here's how successful we were in utilizing you know, these funds and here's what we did with it. So it's and written vaguely enough that allows the NCAC to have control over how the funds are going to be used. So it doesn't say a specific percentage is gonna be used for grants, a specific percentage is to be used for public art. That would be at your discretion. Julia, can you put this in our Google Drive and also share the PDF link with um, one of our attendees who would like to look at it? You're muted. Yes, absolutely, I'll do that tonight. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Julia. Um, th the document is just basically um, talking about our story, what we've done for the last few years. Um, it makes the case for um, support from uh, organizations that we have supported like the Needham Art Association, Needham Open Studios. Um, I pulled some data from our survey that we did over the summer um, and just has a little historical um, the document originally started um, from the town fair. <laughs> a lot of uh, our flyer that we use at the town fair is what we've been, it's just a little history about what we've been doing over the last um, couple of years and how we've gotten to this point. Does anybody have any other questions or um, do you, does anybody feel comfortable making a motion at this point? I see neither. We have a question. Oh. Um, from one of our attendees. Yeah, who... unfortunately attendees aren't allowed to ask questions at this point because this, um, we're not open to questions where um, this is a public meeting. And so um, we can share this information, um, but we can't take any questions from the audience. Go for it, Joni. Make the motion, but help me with the wording if I miss. Sure. Okay. So I move that we put forth the request for this grant for $25,000 over a period of three years. Yes, I would say this, not a grant, a municipal funding request. Municipal, okay. I move that we put forth the request for municipal funding for the amount of $25,000 over a period of three years. Thank you, Joni. Does anybody second that? Julia Gould, I second. Great, Julia. Do you want to do a roll call? Because now we have to do a, a, a voting for yay or nay. Yes. Um, Elizabeth Cook. Oh, might be muted. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Charlie Nanda. Yes. Joni Shockett? Yes. Gail Lustig? Yes. Sharon Breitbart? I'm going to abstain because I'd like to see the document first. No problem. Heather Simmons? Yes. Betsy Mullane? Yes. Samantha Ha. Yes. And Bala Muthakap Parn. Oops, I sure. butchered that. I'm so sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I believe that's everyone that's on the call. Oh, Charlie, you're muted. Good, I was testing you guys. Um, that's exciting news, congratulations. Um, that's a big step forward to be requesting funds. So we'll see what happens. Um, and that document hasn't been submitted yet. So 
um, Julia will share that around and um, for comment. And then in January, um, it sounds like um, we'll have get to go in front of the select board and talk about it further. So we'll talk about this at our next meeting too, I guess. So for advocacy update, um, we need an advocacy lead. If anybody would like to volunteer, please step up to the plate. Um, uh, Bala is going to be taking over some other parts. So she's, um, I'll do the advocacy update today. If you guys have not seen a bazillion emails from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, you are not reading your email. <laughs> There's been a ton. Um, I think maybe I've gotten four in the last week requesting um, uh, me to reach out to my senator or my state legislator. Um, there's a lot of happening in the um, House and the Senate right now. So ARPA funding is obviously going to the state of Massachusetts. Um, Arts and Culture had asked for 575 million. Um, the state, the Senate has allocated 75 million and the House has allocated 150 million. So that's about 400 or so million below what was requested. So um, there, there is a committee of six, um, six, a committee of six that are meeting to try to figure out where they can agree on between the 150 and the 75. So um, you, there's another email, you can reach out to your legislator, but tomorrow is November 17th when they go on recess. So hopefully there's some sort of answer by tomorrow. Um, because then everybody goes on vacation. Um, so there's still time to reach out to your legislator to advocate for 125 million instead of the 75. So that's where the um, legislator, if you are interested in this topic more, definitely sign up for Mass Creatives newsletter. They are amazing at um, giving information and easy ways to click on a page to act, uh, talk to your Senator. Um, or your legislator, very easy ways to do that. Um, so that's all I have for the advocacy update. Phew. Now we can get to the grant review, which is the hard part. Um, this is part one. So the first thing I think we should do is kind of take a step back and um, talk about the grants in general. It's, I know Bala was not here for last year and this is Sam's first year also. And that I think everybody else has kind of gone through this process once. Um, but basically what we're doing is we have 35 grants. I hope everyone was able to get into the MCC Smart Simple. Um, Sharon, I know it was very confusing. You had to log in and everybody has their own passwords now. So if you weren't able to do that um, and you didn't necessarily need to do that, but feel free to, because I actually find it much easier to go into their system and read the grants rather than scrolling through the 300 pages of the LCC oh. panel book. It's for me, I find that easier, but everybody has their own login and you can click on the panel book and um, scroll through it easier. There's a copy um, of the panel book in the Google Drive as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so the, yeah, it's huge and it was hard to download, so thank you. Um, so basically there are four criteria that we need to evaluate all of these grants on. We've never had 35 grants. Last year we had 28. Um, so that we're, it's gonna be a tougher, um, I think, evaluation period for us. But there, um, last year we used a one page document that was a piece of paper that looked like this, which is basically what the form is, but um, the form is digital. So it was kind of harder and more confusing. The reason we got rid of this one page document too is that uh, uh, we had some scoring one through four on here. And last year we found that everybody's numbers weren't really equal. And so the adding them up and trying to evaluate based on that number didn't really work. But the important points is that it meets the four important criteria that it is um, an arts, humanities and science project, check. It has public benefit, check. And that it's non-discriminatory, check. And then it's our local criteria that we set back in August that we all went through. Um, I'll read those off quickly, but I also just wanted to read from the um, the policies and procedures guideline, what um, public um, criteria looks like, because it's really um, public benefit. I spoke to Timothea and in the case last year, we had a, um, um, a denial that wanted to be um, 
wanted us to look at it again. And so I want everyone to be clear on what that, what public benefit means in case we get anybody who wants to be reconsidered because they don't accept the denial. Um, so we need to be really clear. And that's why this criteria form that we've kind of been working on involving over the past couple of years is so important um, to be able to evaluate each grant in the same way. So this quick um, paragraph is public benefit from the policies and procedures guidelines. It says that local cultural council funds must be used to support activities that contribute to the cultural vitality of the community rather than benefiting any private individual or group. However, this does not mean that a large crowd of people needs to participate to satisfy the public benefit requirement. Whenever possible, activities funded by local cultural councils should be available to the public or community by exhibit, performance, demonstration, reading, or other means. Programs do not need to be in person to provide public benefit. Virtual and remote programmings are also effective ways to make programming available to the public while supporting efforts to maintain and promote uh, public health. So when I touch base with our liaison, um, they really, the public benefit and how we evaluate that is really up to us um, to look at. Um, and they don't have a lot of guidelines for what that means. So um, our discussion over the next rest of this meeting and the next meeting is us evaluating each of these grants based on what we think of their public benefit for the Needham Council for Arts and Culture. So we have um, the priorities which are listed in the form nicely. The, um, basically we, what we asked for was high quality achieve, achievable and flexible grants. And the first is that they're um, Needham based organizations, um, individuals and cultural organizations. So these are our priorities. And so if you clicked that, that would be one thing you could click. You could click that the submission addresses the needs of underserved or in need groups, click applicants that elevate the diverse voices and experiences of historically marginalized populations, click. Programs that have demonstrated community support, venue or other organizational support or utilize partnerships to increase public benefit, that's one. And then applicants that are suffering because of the economic impact of COVID-19. Now we didn't put them in any order and we didn't weight them exactly. So that's what this discussion will be. So barring that, wasn't that Google form fun? I think um, Julia is going to take it away. If you want to say anything about the form, Julia, um, feel free to. Um, there is an Excel document that everybody's um, uh, grants got put into that Julia can show us. And then we can just go through. Does anybody want to like volunteer to go first and share the couple of grants that they looked at and keep it really kind of short, short and Usually we would discuss these whole grants. Um, um, so I'm not sure if you guys, would you feel like um, the questions that we put on the form are a lot of the questions that we've been coming up with lately um, and over the past couple of years of things that we keep asking for every grant. So these were just kind of your internal working dialogue to come up with um, what you wanna think about for the grant. So if um, someone who's done it before wants to go first, that'd be awesome. Um, Julia, do you want to say something before we go? Because um, then we, yeah, go for yes. it. Yes. Um, so I know that the Google form without context probably seemed confusing, but essentially it was just so that we're all coming to the table with the same information. I think in past grant years, we always come um, and talk about things with slightly different uh background and, and, and all of that. So I think that this one just expedites the process so that we don't have to on the call, enter in this information with everyone, um, but to um, just gets us all thinking in the same mindset um, so that we can get all the information we need to vote next month. Um, so were there any, um, I guess before we get into like the grant stuff, um, any hiccups with the form or, or things that we might want to, I'm not, I'm not sure if every, I hope everybody's gone in and, um, at least put in some information about their grants. But if not, we um, have the opportunity to make some changes so that this goes smoother next time around. I thought it was great. And I loved the criteria that you set because it, I kept referring back to it as I read my grants and actually was surprised because one, I was prepared to say no to. And at the end I said, oh my God, this is exactly what we are here to do. So, but I'm worried. I, I will 
voice this right up. We've got a fraction of what we wanted. We, we wanted 35,000, we have eight to distribute. And sometimes I think that giving half the amount or a quarter of the amount requested negates it completely. I'm not sure that they can go forward. So in my mind, I'd rather fill people's request and do fewer requests than to just give everybody a little bit. So your number of 35,000, I mean, people reach for the sky. So I'm not completing, completely disagreeing with you, Betsy, but I, I do think when we get down to the yeses, we do make that, like each year I have found to be different than I've been on the council between, sometimes we fully fund people because we think it's an important program. Sometimes we give everybody the same amount but whittling down the, the no's and yeses um, kind of helps formulate that because there are people that are gonna ask us for $5,000. We're never gonna be able to do that because that's not equitable. And they realize that and a lot of times they spend, people are asking for 5,000 and reach out to like 20 or so um, other LCCs. Um, but I agree with your point. Like sometimes if the program is not going to happen and it's something really important, then we want to make it happen. And Just isn't that a history. discussion at, at our next meeting? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Elizabeth. This is more yes or no, but yeah, that's, that's what we usually discuss when we vote. So Charlie, going back to the way you set us up, how much do you want a uh, conversation about, because I've been through it before, I've got all my info right here. I filed it all with you. What? How? How would you like us to go through? I, I think I I I I don't know the answer, but I think Gail um, kind of said it best there. I think it's like weeding out the nos, the definite nos, um, asking the questions of the maybes, and there's some that we just know are yeses, and we don't have to go um, too far into, um, and we can talk further, like if there's some that are clearly yeses there there's a lot that are maybes so, and then so maybe that, that speak to it for a minute or two i mean we have a lot to do and it's quarter of eight <laughs> yeah yeah i i expected that I, I tried to warn you guys that this meeting and the next meeting are going to be two long ones um but i would say if you feel like it's a super yes, I would speed through it. If you're very unclear, we'll go to a medium, medium, like a, and then, and if there's a no, we'll just cut it out quickly. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm but um, Julia, you want to be the timekeeper? Yeah. Uh, do you, so... you have like a wrap it up time thing that you could, you could do, <laughs> like a, like a, we'll start playing the Academy Awards music and, and play you off. But yeah, I want to make think... sure everyone feels like they get to say. It. Yeah, I think a good plan is to just go by person. And then, as you said, if there's any ones that are like definite no's, um, we can kind of quickly get those out of the way. And then maybe we flag ones that we want to make sure that we revisit with a kind of more of a microscope um, when we actually have, when we actually vote. So I asked Julia to be our um, Steve Kornacki at the big board and, and use our Excel document and take some notes there. Um, but also um, take your own notes so that you can revisit this um, Google form and put whatever you want into it. Because in the case that we have a denial that comes back to us, um, we need to kind of have the documentation of how, uh, how our decision came back or how we want to decide on it. Should we um, at the end, so in when we do the denials, there's like that drop down list. We should probably put that tick list in for when we do a no. Like there's what it like five or six things that you have to choose. Yeah. So maybe we yeah, can. Yeah, and we normally pick. I did talk to our liaison about that because we normally picked one. And um, I think sometimes the, the one is not very clear to people. So. Um, we well, can, the report it's, uh, only lets you do one, but in yes, the response it, to them, you could pick multiple if you like. Yeah, we, you can actually do whatever you want. You don't have to use that letter, Gail, which is interesting. Right, right. Um, the Newton Cultural Council, actually, that I, I think I sent the link to you guys. They fill out a criteria form that they have online that um, they give out to the grantees before 
hand so they know what they're being evaluated on. And the form is filled out by the council members. And then the form is actually given to the grantee and it's weighted with each like percentage of, um, you didn't meet it here, you didn't meet it here. So it's like getting, you're getting a grade and it's very clear to you what you didn't. Um, I don't know if we're at, at that point quite yet. I think it's um, definitely not for this year, but it's something to think about in, um, in the future and how we want to handle it. But we, we've only had one um, denial since I've been on it um, that uh, uh, asked the MCC to um, reconsider it. But. Okay, sorry, go ahead, Julia. Okay, so who was gonna who volunteered to go first? Can I just interrupt for one sec? Sorry, I yeah. I'm gonna lose sir. Can I go towards the beginning? I'm gonna I'm in the car as you can probably see, and I'm gonna lose service. So I just don't want to go towards the end sure. because otherwise it won't happen. Okay, why don't can you go second? Is that okay? If a, if yeah, let totally. Elizabeth go first since she's gone before and she can um be a good lead for us. She's always sure. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Go for it, Elizabeth. Okay, well, if I'm too quick, you let me know. <laughs> so my, my first one was at my neighbor's table and I definitely think we should fund it. They asked for 1500 and we should give them 500 because um, they have other sources of income, but it's um, faith-based, it is racial justice, the three conversations would take place in January, April, and October. Uh, one of them is about how to have difficult conversations. Um, it will either be Zoom or in person. Um, and the money would go to the speaker fees. And um, I think that's all you need to know, right? The second. Does that sound right? Yep. It's a great organization. Uh, the second one was the kind of unusual one, which um, is a book signing presentation at the Needham Public Library. And this gentleman is a Haitian and he comes from Brockton. I did talk to the lady that is um, advising him. He's on the Brockton um, Library Board and his book and his talk would be on the Caribbean culture and Haitian arts. And the way that I looked at this, um, they asked for $200, which is really um, his fee. And perhaps when we're all together, we can discuss it more. 80% um, of the help here at North Hill is Haitian. And a lot of these people get off the train and walk up to North Hill. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for sponsoring this guy at the Needham Public Library. Um, he's speaking in Brockton. They have proposals out to Newton. Um, there's also a large uh, Haitian population in Randolph. So um, that, that's my opinion, but it's based really on my own situation here at North Hill. Um, the third one I have is an artist at Gorst Mills that has a proposal about um, a nature learning. It's called A Bug's Eye View. Um, and it, I thought it was quite clever. Um, it's uh, an art exhibit uh, with all kinds of little creatures um, that also talk about the nature involved, what these creatures are. He also does a puppet show. Um, it would be at Gorst Mill, so it's a partnership with them. He was asking for a thousand dollars, but I'm sure we could uh, grant 500, and it would happen next summer. And my last one was the Wellesley Symphony Orchestra, um, which I would say no, there's no reason we should contribute to um, them. Their overall budget is forty-two thousand dollars. And this was take place at the Mass Bay Community College and it was just testing conductors. So those were my four. Can I ask you a question about the um, Joseph Pollock Cape one? Did, is he confirmed with the library? Um, is he have... Um... I, I, the woman seemed to think that well, she had written them a letter and uh, she, the, this Anne Beauregard, because I know that's a, um, a criteria we have. 
And she seemed to think that because they were all associated with the libraries that it was going to uh, work out and there would be a date either in February or May. Um, but I, I said I would call her again before our vote time. Um, it's a minimal amount of money and it's going out on a limb that's a little strange, but um, I would like to keep it in the mix until the December meeting. Anybody have any other questions for um, Elizabeth? Betsy, I see your hand, so. No, 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 that was just, I'd like to go next. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I do have a question and I can look at the panel book, but I was trying to determine, I mean, I know 200 doesn't sound like a lot, but I wondered where the 200 was going to, because the library to book the library is like $25. So, well, they were so going to be getting a hundred dollars for presenting his own, his book. No, no it's that. going, it's going to marketing and promotion supplies and materials, which are handouts and, and then a hundred dollars to the author. Okay, it's fine. I mean, I think it's a great thing. I was just curious. I found it in the book. Yeah. Okay. You thank can just you. you can search we can the talk document. about dollars next time. Later. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great summaries, Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out that John Lecter was the gentleman that came to our open yeah. house. Um, so we all got to meet him in um at the last meeting. Not to mention that he did one of our electrical. I, and I meant to point out, because I did, um, I was in communication with John, there's a mistake on his entry. It says the summer of 21, and he meant it to say summer of 22. Okay. Yeah, I found his application to be very professional. He, he um, actually staged, I don't know if you noticed in the pictures, he, he staged this actual project and took pictures in Gorse Mills to show us what it might look like. And that was all done for this application, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. All right, so moving good. along, um, if we're good on this one. Okay, um, uh, Sam, do you wanna do yours? That one's good. All right, which one do you want me to start with? Uh, hold on one second. Sam, all let right. me bring some, before you start, um, did you want to switch one of yours? Because something um, we didn't talk about. I read, I read through it and I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't even bring this up yet. Sorry, I totally forgot. If anybody has a conflict of interest with any of the applications, you can um, uh, just abstain from speaking about it. We're not voting at this point, but um, at the voting meeting, you would abstain and probably leave the room. But nobody mentioned... Um, any conflicts of interest for any of the applications that I knew of um, directly um, that they're assigned to. Sorry, go ahead, Sam. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, so open doors first, um, Discovery Museum. So okay. um, the Discovery Museum is in Acton and it is a program called Open Doors. And um, I mean, I won't talk about it a lot. I think it's a great program. They help ensure access to their museum by providing um, $1 per person admission for different groups like that face financial barriers as well as um, difficulties like um, being deaf or hard of hearing, hearing blind, et cetera. Um, they asked for 400 the last year. Um, we gave them, I think it was three, 250 and they had asked for 300. Um, so I guess it depends on what we decide, but I'm for giving them um, money. And then anything else you'd like me to cover on that? Nope. Okay. No, I think that that's good. Um, are, do they have any other funding? Um, yes, they apply to other, um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to it. They apply to other um, councils okay. for funds. And I noticed they worded that kind of differently. In the past, they've said the other councils that they've applied to, but this year the, they made the project seem most specific to Needham and said that, you know, this is Needham project was not going to be applied to other councils, if that makes any sense to people. Well, maybe it's sponsoring like one night or 
something like that. Yeah, it's more like sponsoring like the Needham's attendance portion of that they calculated yeah. probably because they take zip codes yeah. when people get there. In 2021 to date, it says 136 Needham residents um, visited through this program. So that's pretty cool. And they're one of the few museums like this left. There used to be more. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, let's do the Glee Club next. Okay. Let me just pull that up. Um, okay. So I believe in the past we've funded them. Um, and I, I was having trouble with this one, to be honest. Um, I couldn't quite understand like what what's so expensive for the one day event um, because it's listed at $14,000. Um, and they're requesting, I believe it's 1,500. Uh, so basically this is for a concert that they would host at um, the church in Needham, um, the Christ Episcopal Church on December 5th. I believe the director, so if you look at the expenses, the director and the accompanist are very expensive. Yeah. Like, because their director is the one that brings in the people and such. So that's what I, that's why it's so expensive. Gotcha. Um, we have sponsored them for the past however many years, at least something. Yeah, it looks like um, in the past, I think, was it last year we gave them $450? Yeah. They pay their lead pinner as well. Right. It's all, it's mostly salaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Samantha, would you? Where your where's your head at with this one? I mean, I would say I guess partial um, week funding again, but um, I guess it depends on what we go with. Like, if we want to fund, I forget, I think it was Betsy that was saying like, do we want to fund full projects or do we want to make a dent in something that's really large, um, or do we also want to keep giving to people that we've supported in the past many times? So um, yeah, I guess that's not really a straight answer right now. In the yeah, fall, the, I think we should keep them in the mix, and then we're going to do money next time, right? So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Take yeah, money. I think we funded them more than just one year, so they're yeah. an annual group yeah, that we regular. Yeah. All right, so let's go to uh, David Maloof uh, music and education event. Okay, um, so this one is a new request. He's requesting $350 for a music and education event is what it's titled. Um, it sounds cool, but a lot of the stuff is really vague in terms of like when it will take place was my concern. Um, we would definitely need further clarification, like when it will take place as a spring, summer, fall of 2022. Um, and he doesn't necessarily have a venue locked down right now. Um, so, this one, he basically runs a program called Laugh and Learn, which shows the value of laughter, how and why we laugh, and how comedy is created with performance of original jokes and comedy songs, um, vocals, ukulele, and piano. Um, and he has three different options for the program. Um, but there are just a lot of unknowns right now. So I definitely need to follow up with him to get more information. I don't know if, Charlie, you had any thoughts on that, because I know you scanned them, but um yeah so that's kind of my thoughts yeah cool. you know last year there was someone we funded that I would never have that didn't have a venue and I would never have funded in a million years but we found a great they found a great partner and it went really well so that's there seems to be a bucket of of people that seem to reach out that need a venue and um need a partner um and if we can find that for them then it would be good to fund but it's gotcha. more work than normal. Uh, would anybody agree with that statement or? Does he have, I know who you were referring to last year, Charlie, and he's asking for such a small amount of money. I wonder if he has a website or videos or something like that. I know that really swayed us last time. 
when we looked at um, the chainsaw guy and we saw his videos and we're like, oh, this would be really cool. And we got all excited about it. So that might be something if we could see some YouTube or just something, but it is a very low amount, so. Gotcha, sorry, I was confused by like the question on the questionnaire, like asking if they had a like venue confirmed, like thinking it was like something that was like a bonus if they already did, I guess, or like it is. a higher weight. I yeah, it is. it is. It is. It is. It's yeah. It's just to, nice to know that there's like real plans to do something. Yeah. yeah. In in the past, we were allowed. There have been times where if they had no venue, there was no partner, then you would cut it out. Um, but more during COVID times, you're kind of supporting the artist a little bit. Um, and also, I will say that we are an unusual council, whereas um, the majority of cultural councils in Massachusetts have more funding than applications. And so we're in a different situation often. All right, so we'll turn that one yellow to dig a little bit deeper to figure out what's going on there and then we'll circle back. Um, so Needham Diversity Initiative, their Martin Luther King Day celebration. Yes, um, we've supported them in the past and I think that it's a, um, I mean, great initiative and brings benefit to um, underserved groups in the town. So, I mean, I, I'm just pulling it up. Sorry, give me one second. Um, I know we've also, let me see where you are. So, sorry, just give me one sec. So in the past, we, do you have it, The because I submitted in the form, can you just scroll over? Thank you. Yes. So we submitted, yep, so we gave them $500 in 2021, they asked for $1,500. Um, essentially, what this helps do is fund the um, MLK Day um, an event. They have plans for hosting it in person, hopefully, but have contingencies for doing it remote. Um, and in particular, they serve the METCO population um, of students in the school system. So um, I think that's something that I don't know if other groups serve that we've gotten grants from. Um, and it will have speakers, children's choirs, and audiovisual presentations. When you say it serves METCO, um, do you just mean that that's who attends it or? Um, it says their target audience is the Metco families and the mm -hmm. citizens of Needham who are associated with the school system. Um, so others, yeah, as well. Um, and then yeah, they I also put part... online this year. It was pretty great. Was it? Yeah, it we sounds attended like it also... last year, and we I attended it this year. It was it was a good event in, in person would be even better. And yeah. if we could make sure that they get our um, publicity in there, I don't I think they're having trouble doing that. That would be awesome too. Yeah, and they also they, partner we've, with the- We've sponsored them pretty much every year that yeah. I can remember. I don't know how far back, but I yeah. think we've always given them something to contribute. Yeah, they have, and they also partner with the Needham Human Rights Committee and different organizations in Needham, which is for this event, which is, I think, nice um, so yeah they'll still hold it if we don't sponsor it but i think having our name on it is really good yeah and we just got to get our name on it yeah i know <laughs> we'll work on that so it sounds like that's a yes for now cool um and i think those were all of yours all right um who wants to go next i would that's go for it betsy yeah. Yeah, let's Thanks. do Betsy. Great. Um, I'm gonna get to my two no's right off the bat. Uh, let's see, I believe the Alex left the one about cycle of memory. Um, he wants $2,000. Um, the film has already been made. He just wants funding to be able to, um, to market it from what I can tell. Um, you know, it would be a screening event to promote his stuff. He is from, I think, Williamstown. 
So he's not from the area. And I think that he just wants us to promote it. Um, much as, you know, the memory care would be great. I thought that he just asked too much. Any thoughts? Did it um, meet any of the local criteria that we had listed? I didn't believe so, no. I don't have the form that I filled out. Okay. But it's it was showing, showing on the screen. If you look at the form, the results of the, your form are on the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. It's not producing the film. It's making sure that it's viewed. And I think it's probably great, but I think he can make it happen on his own. Yeah, it seems like the only um, criteria it meets is utilizing partnerships to increase public benefit, which is broad and, and vague. Exactly. And I don't he think he has a local partnership. Yeah. He, he'd like to, but I don't think he'd like to. That's what he'd like to get from us. Um, I can see that as an easy no and just recommend that he contact the Needham channel, have it played on the Needham channel. Okay, <laughs> good idea. In my opinion. Okay. Um, all right, next up. Another one is uh, the, well, we'll just go down to Penelope Kirk. Yep. Um, you know, initially I was going to say no, and then I really liked it, um, but she's asking for $2,500. Um, what she wants to do is hold concerts for people in Needham housing. And I don't think that we have to give her $2,500, but it does serve an underserved population here in Needham. And it could be great. I mean, who, Who's to say that other people can't come to the concerts? Does she, she have her, approval from the, the Needham Housing Authority to hold them? Yeah, um, the Needham Housing Authority she's been working with. Okay. If you wanted me to give a little more context, because she did reach out and send a letter. She is actually the commissioner of the Public Housing Authority. So this is a huge um, partnership um, with Needham Public Housing. It's a, a space obviously in Needham where we have public housing, maybe one of the only spaces in Needham that actually serves the underserved population of actually in Needham. But I think there are 350 residents. So right. this is indirect, it's a, basically a music festival bringing in artists to um, directly serve people who have been impacted by COVID because a lot of them are seniors and can't um, haven't really left their complex. So it's bringing in sort of the healing uh, business of music and art right to the um so i would i would feel strongly that we fund this in some some way and um unfortunately we can't fully i I, can't, I don't see how we could fully fund it but i think that maybe we this is something that we reach out to um try to find some other partners to help fund it on really because it's a it's a very worthwhile project and i hope it does happen um, but um, maybe reaching out great. to her too to see um how many musicians if we just fund, I think it probably said, if we give them a certain amount of money, there's two artists, uh, musicians we could fund. And then there's a third that's maybe a bigger named one that was asking for more money. So there, I think there's like an amount that we could look at. Two of them are donations to high school groups. One of them, and then the third is just transportation for the Harvard kids. And then there's an artist that's getting yeah, I'm actually surprised that the high, at least the Needham High acapella groups are getting paid. They never did when my well, but the groups aren't getting paid. They ask for donations. Of course they do. I I think oh, yeah, you know maybe that. we don't have yeah. to fund them, but uh, yeah, I see what you're yeah. saying. Yep, good point. But I agree. I think it's a great, great program. Great, great program. All right, so we'll great. Okay. Um, it's revisit great. that one. Now there's another one, Valerie My Mayo. She's the next one. And initially I was like, no, 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 no. It's only like 26 kids. And she's asking for $900. What, when I really got a bit deeper into this, I realized that what she's doing is, is focusing on dance, creative dance for kids with disabilities, which I think is an amazing thing. And she already has funding for, I think eight weeks. What she'd like is funding for another three 
so she can, you know, continue on the program. Um, I think it's it represents kids from K through five who attend Needham's Early Learning Center. She's got a venue. Sunita Williams um, has a room for her, and there's no cost to the attendees. I just think it's it serves a group that gets marginalized possibly in Needham. I, I don't know. I didn't have a kid in the yes. elementary Betsy, school. I think you weren't at the meeting where she attended, but she talked to us about this. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah, she attended the open house and and, yeah. and got some it's advice very on exciting. the project. Yeah. Well, anyway, I really yeah, liked it. Even though 26 kids. Yeah. The vote we keep it in. Yeah. I like it. Great. Okay. The last one is John Porch Porcino Porcino. And I gave him a no. He's from Amherst. He said his, I was a little frustrated with his application because it kind of meandered. It's like telling life stories and then telling, showing people how to tell their life stories and um, through song. And it just didn't really seem specific. He didn't have anything figured out. Um, was this the application where he mentioned that he, um, if there were other projects that were getting funded, he should not be funded, but he, this is just a way to connect with the town and maybe get um, some contacts. Yeah, that was, I, I see you nodding, Sharon. So you remembered yeah. that as well, yeah, yeah. which I thought was really interesting. So to me, that I would, would give be a them no. contacts. I would yeah, say no and then give them the contacts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't have a set program. He didn't know where he was going to go and what he was yeah. going to do. And he just said, I'm super talented. Believe me, you're going to love it. And I thought, well, I think we need a little bit more than that. There are a lot of other people that give us a lot Wait, more. Than that. Sorry to interrupt. You're talking about John Porcino. Is that who you said? Yes. Yeah. Because I, I believe that was mine, but. Um, oh, am I wrong? That one was mine, but I'm in agreement with whatever you're saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No, I, I mean, I can. I can just say a little bit. He was a little bit all over the place. Do you mind if I continue? Yeah, go for it. Um, um, just that he was requesting 425, which isn't a lot. It sounds like he doesn't have a venue. He's willing to work with us. I think, I believe he was rejected last year. It sounds like he really wants to have a go at it, but I'm not sure. I think, I thought when I looked it up that we declined his grant, that I had a hard time looking at that um, spreadsheet for that one. Um, he seems a little scattered, that's all. And he, he seems like he's got this, a lot of enthusiasm for storytelling um, and he wants to, he just sounds like he wants to be included. He has a lot of enthusiasm for storytelling and, um, and music playing but he doesn't sound super organized and he sounds a little desperate like he wants he's like i'll include i'll pay for i'll, I'll cover this cost this year just to make this happen yeah um, and he's willing to work you know, like he keeps saying he's willing to work with us the other thing that was a little confusing is that he said one of the questions was does it um does it include adult uh children as an art target audience, um, does this project primarily serve school children K through 12, pre-K through 12? And he said no, but then later he like includes them as part of it along with other older people. Honestly, this seems like it's mostly for kids <laughs> or families, but um, yeah, anyway, I, I, said, I would keep I it as a no then if you that if you agree with that Heather I and think then, I think that was sort, I actually ended up writing online I put in a maybe because I was like should we try to give this guy a chance like back burner in case there was some kind of money but if she's also feeling like if you reviewed it as well then and you're more of a no then maybe that just makes it a no okay yeah, I so think it, um, it was almost like a pity thing. Like, I feel kind of mm -hmm. bad. This guy is really trying hard. Well, we you don't know. have a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> so we're already spread pretty thin. He was, he's not asking for a lot. That was it, yeah. $425. It didn't seem like a very high amount compared to what others were asking. 
but he doesn't seem, I think, go back to him and say, like, why don't you, if you want to do this again, secure a venue or something. Give him that as a note. Yeah, he was the one looking for contacts, so maybe we can follow up with some contacts for him. Yeah, that's why I felt a little bad, like, but then if he really wanted it, why didn't he try to do the bookwork to? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Becky, um, did you not do Needham Open Studios? That was your fourth I have on my right. list. Oh, you know what? Somehow I cut and pasted. I, I must have been wrong. Okay. Um, no, I did. You know what? I actually did Needham Open Studios because I think you mentioned it. Yeah, and I think that we should fund them just because they're Needham. They're open studios. We always <laughs> love open studios. So yes. Um, actually, However, I, I, initially I don't think they used our money from last year. And we gave them a lot of money last year. I don't think they ever held open studios. They didn't use our $500. I think we well, should check. That's because it was and a, is this, a pandemic. No, I understand, but I don't think they used the grant. Like, did well, we get their paperwork that said they actually printed the brochure? I don't think they did. I no, they canceled that. it for the last two years. So then the, their money was written into their organizational overhead. Oh. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to understand. I know we had a big discussion about them last year. We ended up giving them money, but my understanding is their organizational overhead doesn't exist if they don't have an event. I could be wrong, but that's what we were told, that if we didn't have an event, if they didn't have an event, there's no overhead. I understand it's expensive to hold their events. There's promotional materials, there's the maps, there's all that kind of thing. But we gave them money last year and the understanding that if, that if they didn't use it, they should carry it over as we use. That's I think what, that's the maybe what should happen is someone, maybe Betsy, you could uh, contact them and get a little bit more insight into, um, is it our place to ask them what they did with the funding last yes, year? Yeah, they don't... have to tell us either. Okay. They oh, use I followed up. Their... I've spoken to them many times. We followed up with yeah. them. and um... But did they use last year's money, Charlie, is my question. If it's or, yes, that's fine. Uh, they've done, I mean, they've had an event since then, so I'm sure they used it towards their event. They just had the um, open studios in front of the town hall. Um, I don't know if they used, if the dollars went to funding in particular, um, marketing. There. All I'm trying to do is close the loop is part yeah. of the process for the grants is either they use the money for the event or they tell us they use it for COVID related expenses that they have before we give it to them again, which I'm all for because I hope they can have it in person. I would love to walk around in May and participate. We need to close the loop and confirm that they used it because this is two, I know two years ago, they ended up printing, like designing the brochure and paying the designer and the money went to that even though they didn't print it and use it. So that was justified. I just like to close the loop, that's all. Well, I think we need, someone needs to reach out to them because the, yeah project is for the brochure again. So we need clarification yeah. on, is it to design something new? Is it to print what they already have? Is it to replenish? Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying yeah. this one has come up the past three years and they haven't held an event since then. So, okay. Yeah, well, I, I have connected, yellow... uh, just so you know, I have connected with them and I, we, um, prior to writing the grant, I spoke to them to, um, that and told them that you know we're accepting organizational funding and that maybe the brochure is not the best way to apply for a grant um, in the future and maybe to apply for you know more of their online web development stuff and so um, I am surprised to see that 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 the grant was necessarily for printing the brochures yeah. again but um, uh, yeah I can follow up with them I have been having conversations with them. Um, the money is going towards something in their organization. Um, is that is that legal under the yeah, is that legal under the state understand. rules? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, guys. This is I think this is an intricate conversation, and we're on time. And I'd like to stick to reviewing the okay. grants. So we, we can table next, this for next month. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Yep. 
Um, so I believe that was all Betsy. Heather, do you want to finish up yours? Oh, she's still there. Okay, because I would, right, I would go next. I thought it was <laughs> go ahead, Heather. No, you can. If I you can want. go too. No, no. <clears throat> Whoever, right we here. all have to go, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. and we're gonna go fast. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll be really good. Cool. Okay, so should I start then? Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Which one are you gonna start with? Okay. Um. Needham Community Revitalization Trust Fund. Okay. So, and we already did the Sean Cortina. We don't have to discuss that one anymore. So, Correct. Um, so that one is for the flags, the banners that go up in town. Um, it's a banner program in town and it's through, hang on, sorry. Um, and it's, a made up of several volunteers who are appointed through the Needham Select Board. Um, and in the past, they've done the um, Symbols of Pride program and Chapel Street Banner Showcase program. And they've allowed organizations to promote civic institutions. It's a little broad, but um, and public events such as New Year's Eve and the 4th of July celebrations. Um, they, this year, because they're not having those, um, they're seeking to inspire a positive message this holiday season and for the new year to all who live, work, and visit Nina. Um, so they're seeking sponsorship for a banner called One World Together that is intended to promote joy and unity. Um, I mean, I, I, it was funny when I was, my daughter was asking, um, what is this, what is it um, cover? Like what, 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 which grants are you reviewing? And I told her about this one and she was like, what banners are you talking about? So um, I don't think she's the target audience. I think it's nice to have an inspiring message. I know that we've funded them before. Um, I don't feel very strongly one way or another about this project. Um, when I think about funding the arts, this doesn't seem like, to me personally, like the best use of funds, though, if it helps local, you know, town morale during COVID, that's always nice. I don't know if this is the best way to do that, though. So that's my thought on that. And they're requesting $1,000. So these are like the banners we funded, similar to the banners we funded last year? Is that no, right? these are exactly the banners we funded last year. And so, so they're just, them more money just paying them to put them back, helping oh, reinstall okay. them. So why a thousand dollars? I don't. I don't know. I don't. Shirley, I know you've had some. They have connection. storage, right? It was like storage and paying someone to put them up, and they have to secure them. And we didn't get. Not, yeah, I'm, I guess we should follow up with that exact number. Um, that would be a good follow up question. Of the number of, sorry, of the cost. Yeah, because they're requesting a thousand. So, okay. So you want me to just follow up with that? Um, it's a tough one. Is it clear in the in the budget line what the thousand dollars goes to? Um, I don't. It just says we'll continue to, um, you know. I would keep this one as yellow and move on with other questions. Materials, maintenance, removal, and storage costs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. The yes. Same as last it is on there. Year. Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave that yellow. And then if we get more info, um, we'll revisit it next month. Okay. I mean, I, I might be the only one that says like, it, it, it's a little bit of a personal opinion. <laughs> like, I don't know, <laughs> just feel like there are other things that could probably benefit people more than banners, so. Yeah, and honestly, the thing that I look at when I have doubts 
um, and this is just personally what I do, is I always look at the how will you adjust the project if the council cannot fund it. And they said, if you can't give us the money, we'll actively solicit. And they actually, like this particular group has a lot of fundraisers. So okay. that's one of the things that I use. I mean, I agree it should be yellow. We can discuss in December, but um, a lot of the times we're swayed by people who can't get the funding other places, but we think something is beneficial. Yeah, okay. That's a good point. Um, and then, let's see. The Dedham Coral Dedham Society. Coral. Yeah, there's still, there are more than I had last year. So I'm like, wait, which one am I on now? <laughs> okay, so the Dedham Coral Society, we did give them money last year and they are actually going to do an in-person. Last year, I think that if I remember correctly, it was just to cover the expenses of um, people that came together to rehearse, I believe. This year they have, um, they do have a location where they're gonna perform. They're asking for $500. Um, and I remember last year one like asking, so the way that it, they do perform in the Holy Name Church, West Roxbury and Dedham is where they do the rehearsals. Though it's not local, they do have a lot of native people that sing with them. So I believe that's why we did fund them last time because of the, um, connection that they have just with people in Needham. And I would say yes on that one again. Um, who doesn't want live music? Um, and then the last one is any other, is that good? Is, yeah. Do you need any more? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and then Marilyn Morales is asking $825. It's a duo pianist, composer, and educated Whipple Morales in concert is the very long title. Um, number of people served um, would be a thousand, it says. Um, and they're gonna do a live pre-concert lecture for the community via Zoom, followed by a recorded performance, which were, um, they are only licensing to participating communities. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly. Um, so it's original works for piano. Uh, a virtual event includes education components coordinated with your local cable access station. I don't know how many, I don't know. <laughs> I we did, give it we a did one of these last year. We looked at one of these last year and honestly, they're just, trying to sell it to all the different local cable stations and like nobody watches our community. Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. Like, <laughs> are, are people gonna really tune in for this? And then they say that they kind of appeal to all ages, but honestly, I can't see anybody. Um, sitting like on cable kid. watching. Like I'm not gonna get my kids kind of sitting piano. in front of cable to watch a yeah. piano lecture and concert of two people. Uh -huh. So I think that there's, again, I think there's some, like a maybe but i think it's a maybe to know <laughs> i think that there are other but ones some public that benefit, are kind of more but not in relationship to the other applications that we have at this point yeah. so and they uh, have other funding right from private and and other in kind support so yeah it's happening with or without us whether it's shown in our community is the question mm -hmm. yeah yeah i just don't think it doesn't seem like um all that inspiring to see something like that. I mean, if it were live, it'd be a different story. Yeah. And and I know that people have to do virtual in some instances, but this isn't, I don't know. Okay. So I'm yeah. hearing a no. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. All right. Cruising right along. <laughs> you are hearing a no. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Uh Gail, you're up. Okay. Um Hold on, I'm going to put you on my other screen so that I can see, so you'll see the side of my face. Okay, so Tova, I know we already, we, we've worked with Tova before. I really like her. I'm going to go last on that one and I'll tell you why. So the Needham Art Association, I think it sounds wonderful. I think we should talk about dollars next week. They do some really cool projects, especially the mini paintings that they give away. I would give them a hard yes. 
We can talk dollars next week. Um, they do a lot of really cool presentations and, and things. They do one thing a month, um, combination of virtual and in-person. So definitely um, a yes there. For the plugged-in band program, this is specifically for a scholarship for a student. Um, plugged in, um, most of us know it, love it, great program. Um, it would be great if we could help sponsor a student because it is very expensive, but I know so many students who have benefited from, it's a family and it's a family of arts and performers and stuff like that. So that's a yes, I don't, we'll talk dollars next week um, and give what we can. Um, so the story time crafts. So this one was very interesting because um, it's paying rent, helping to pay rent for a donation center, but the recipients of their donations are not in need them. And I have a problem with that. I think it's a great organization. They collect books and toys and bikes and they do some great things. They do it in partnership with Boston schools. If you talk to Lisa, it's always, that's the person who runs Storytime Craft. It's always Boston, Boston, Boston. Her website says Boston, Boston, Boston. Great program. It's also weird because it's helping her pay rent. She needs a bigger space to collect it. Um, so to this, unless anybody can think of differently, it's a hard no for me. If she were gonna say, I'm gonna bring a program to Needham for the first time, I would be all in for that, so. Yeah, I would say I would disagree on that because this is a, pro um, a program based in Needham using Needham student volunteers. And so I see a lot of value um, off of that aspect of the project. Plus, I mean, we don't have a giant underserved community in Needham. And so this is Needham's way of um, serving other communities. There are people in Needham who can't afford books. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying there isn't. So I'm if saying said, that is... we're going to seek out Needham kids and give people books who have never owned a book in their life. This is, I mean, I can be outvoted. I'm just saying like there are kids in Needham in the Needham Public Schools that have never owned a book, that have never taken home a physical book and owned it. So I think that, I think she has actually, I'm not 100% certain, but I think she has actually helped out um, locally when asked. And maybe that would be something to ask her about. Yeah, I, I actually, um, if we're gonna do this, I think I, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, Again, like she writes a lot of grants and she wrote this grant for the rent, not for the program, not to run a program. This is to rent the bigger space. So I, I think that's what struck me the most. I was ready for her to like um, mention a program or something she wants to do or engage Needham students. Like there's no mention of community engagement at all in her entire application. It's about rent. So that was the thing that struck me the most about this application. So again, maybe it's asking for the wrong thing. Um, maybe she yeah, just got, buy for me, organizational expenses, but. I see what you're saying. For me, I just got that this is a major expansion of the program and that's what the, the new ask was about, but maybe that was yeah. just. No, I, I, I agree with you, Charlie. I think it is. I just that it doesn't seem to fit our mission. And maybe I'm wrong, but this one of all, like we've talked to a bunch of them. I know we haven't finished, but compared to other things, um, I don't see the direct benefit to increasing her program and increasing her storage to serve other communities. And, may, and again, maybe she just wrote the grant wrong. And she should have mentioned, I benefit Needham in the following ways. And she didn't anywhere in her application. And that's kind of what set me on this path. Like it doesn't say anything about, oh, and I use student volunteers and I introduce them to giving and like, 
there's nothing in the application about that. So I think maybe um, somebody should maybe you should reach reach back to her and ask her to further clarify the application. Yeah, and it's definitely within our rights to um, say we're conditionally funding you based on if you're doing this, this, and this. So that that's um, something that we have the ability to, to do if we choose to. Well, I think we can ask her if it benefits Needham residents and we follow and up how? and talk about it next time in the interest of time. Yeah. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna turn her yellow. I'm happy to go next. Me too. Wait, I still have one more. Oh. Yeah, Tova. Yeah, so I left Tova and again, um, we funded Tova before we've worked with her. This is a maybe for me only because it's focused on a smaller audience. Um, and also it's for some workshops where she's charging participants $15 to participate. And yes, she does say if there's a financial need, they won't have to pay it, but it's, it's a little different than a lot of our events. Most of our events don't charge. I mean, some do like the Glee Club does the con some of the concerts, but um, I made a maybe we can talk about it, but it's about presenting some workshops, it would be a total of 50 people max in charging out. And she, the idea was that she would do three different art, therapeutic art workshops for three different types of population, populations. So they maybe one for adults, one for kids, one for seniors. Um, she has the state, like, I'm not worried about her having a venue. I think she could find one. She also has a studio, um, but I was on the fence with this one because I, I think she could do it. I think um, I got I think, maybe. Yeah, I think that um, I'm leaning more towards to to fund her, not not so much in the maybe camp. I think that yeah, the you know the reach is relatively small, but that's. 50 people that are going to be like actively engaged in art um, that, you know, otherwise maybe wouldn't have, and we're supporting a local artist. Um, yep. That makes sense. That's why I said maybe like, I, like, I think it's a great idea and I didn't want yeah. to say no. It's just, again, it's, it's the nature of it. Like, can we, like, I almost felt like we could say we will fund one workshop and it'll be free or something like that. So we can talk about funding next time. I definitely okay. think we should talk about it next time. I'm definitely, we can change it to a yes, honestly, because I, I don't have any concerns about that. When okay. I'm looking at it, I see that it's free for students. So if the, the portion that would be Needham Youth and Family Services, working with teens, girls, and LGBT right, middle schoolers would be yep. free. One, I have one question about that. Rental of outdoor space at Gorse Mill Studios for workshop. I don't even know you really need to, that's kind of, that just struck me as odd because I don't know hey, why you have to have the like rent. Gorse Mills is maybe donating in kind, right? Yeah, it says Gross I mean, Mill Studios said, has offered to donate their outdoor garden space, at least for one site. So you might be looking at where it's an in-kind donation. Yeah, because look at the budget. Yeah, because she's a member of Gross Mill, so they, they're not going to charge her, but they're donating it in-kind. Yeah, that's common to put as an amount towards an in-kind donation for yeah. the space that you're using. Yeah. All right, so I want okay, to keep yeah, you can change that to a yes. And that okay, okay, cool. Um, Sharon, you're up. Nope, oh, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, catnip junkie, Jenny Doobie. Uh, catnip junkies are uh, a band uh, based not in Needham and they're going to come to town and do a concert on the common though they don't really seem to have talked to anyone about doing that um, and they're going to coordinate with us in order to present it um, and <laughs> they want uh, $1,600 and as much as I 
um, love uh, uh, New Orleans based jazz. Um, and it was, as much as it would be great to have a concert on um, the Needham Common, I'm not going to recommend them because I don't think they've, I think they've just, I don't think they've done a lot of groundwork for this. Um, but uh, I don't even know if we can hold concerts on the common. I don't think we can. I, I think that's why there's a concert <laughs> series uh, at the high school. So yeah. uh, they obviously have not investigated this. So, um, and and haven't gotten permission from the town and there would be any number of, um, I'm assuming licenses that, or at least one uh, permission that might be needed and they have not done that. So um, I, it would be fun and awesome <laughs> and great and too bad um, I wouldn't, I would recommend that we not consider them. Yeah. Um, but they, they look pretty funky and cool. Um, then the, I just wanted to pull up my, uh, the Brookline Community Center for the Arts. Um, and they want to provide services to programming production for local artists in Needham and Wellesley, and they want to film them. Um, but, um, and mainly it is one artist because they have, they want to film the, an artist based in Wellesley uh, who works in Cambridge um, and they want to help her create a video. Did anyone else get anything else out of that grant? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so, exactly what you said. <laughs> okay. So again, um, th that's great that they want to they want to help this artist, um, but it would be great if she had some connection to Needham too. So I'm going to say no for that one. Um, and then we have, oh, this, I got some wonky ones, didn't I? Um, so then the, um, the Center for the Arts in Watertown, the Mo Mo Mosian Center for the Arts, um, <laughs> says that the project's gonna take place at the Needham Public Library, but, and it, it's an ASL workshop, which, Awesome. I, you know, I haven't worked as much on my ASL since college, so it would be uh, great to have them, but it's not quite, they have worked with the public schools, but it doesn't tell us really what they're gonna do. I'm assuming because they're working with the library that they're going to present some type, it's a video, they're going to present some type of video of this project. It was, I thought it was a pretty confusing. I was uh, super confused, Sharon, I'm with you. I <laughs> was confused too. I didn't know if they were getting an interpreter for some of something, some No, 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 it's, it's an ASL story time, but it is it is not live. And I'm assuming it's gonna be at the library, but the, um, the but they didn't say that. Um, so again, they're, they're based at the, the, uh, Watertown, um, Center for the Arts, um, uh, and I, we can keep them in if anyone feels strongly but i Did i they have any support letters from the library or anything no nothing no they didn't have anything it just says needham library will um will collaborate on it on the project period and then it gives the address of the needham library which was very helpful so i again uh, yeah 
you know, we have a lot of things that need them that need help. Exactly. That was, that's where I was going. Um, so I'm going to have to, I would waste time. have to say no for that one. Um, but yay, I did get the <laughs> <laughs> grant from Adina Tron Crest. Now. Was there any other library applications this year? Or is that the only one? Only one, I think. Right? I only have, yeah. Yeah. The Haitian gentleman that I am. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Adina wants to make some um, uh, tiles outside of Gorse Mills um, with um, the everyone that everyone will see. And she's going to involve the community in making them. Um, and she's going to work with Tova. Uh, yeah, and very much. Um, sounds pretty cool to me. So I would certainly leave her in the mix. Whether we fund her $1,500, I don't know, but I'd, I'd leave her in there. I would say, I would add to that. Do you remember last year when we were um, funding the landscaping at the Gorse Mills and everyone was like, darn, I wish this was an art project. <laughs> here's, your, here's your art here's project. Go. Yeah, it sounds like, I, I mean, I, I think it sounds lovely. Um, it does. But I don't want to judge for anyone else. But I, I, I think it's it's Needham artists doing art in Needham with Needham. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think we should keep it in. I'm done. All right, uh, Joni, you're up. Okay. Um, I'll do the nose first because I think they're pretty quick. The first one is Ha Na Han Na Son. And he wants to put on an outdoor music festival in Needham in June or late August of 2022. He's asking for $3,000 out of a budget of 3,800. He has no venue. Um, no Let plan. me interrupt you for one second and just say yeah. Hanasan is a woman and she approached us at the town fair about uh -huh, the project okay. talking about it. Um, so uh, I'll let you okay. go. Um, she said that it will benefit 10 kids her goal is to put on an outdoor music festival of classical music with professional um, music teachers and as well as um, some students. Probably, she's, it says the total number of youth served is 10. The total number of people is 15. Um, the duration would be 50 to 60 minutes and performed by a diverse group of musicians. It, it says they'll, they'll present their scales to a, an audience of Needham residents and their families. The concert will be free. And that's pretty much the same thing that she says. Um, it's they're, they're teachers and students from the Needham and greater Boston area. My questions were there's she doesn't know where she wants to have it um i don't know i i see this a little bit in competition with the um uh the needham um whatchamacallit concert society and i just think it's a it's thirty three thousand dollars for paying the um musicians primarily paying the the musicians and then publicity and renting chairs for out, for outdoors. I just don't see how this is really of benefit to the groups that we, we want to benefit. It just does what Needham Concert Society does, which is present the teachers and the students to those people who wanna come, um, usually in one of the churches or one of the synagogues. So I don't know, you know, what she said. Um, I love, you know, I love the idea of classical music, but I think she's doing exactly the same thing and asking for a lot of money to do it. So do we want to hold on this and maybe try to get a little bit more information about logistics um, or is your recommendation, Joni, to, to pass? Well, my concern is that that she only, you know, only deals with 10 kids and need them. 
And that's a lot of money to showcase maybe five or six of those kids who will perform. A lot of the kids choose not to perform if the Needham Concert Society is any indication. It's a volunteer thing. So if, you know, if we're paying money to, to pay for musicians, many of whom are not from Needham, um, and it's only using you know, a handful of our children um, and maybe a handful of the musicians are from Needham, that's a big expenditure per person and I'm a little uncomfortable with it. Now, if, if people, if you, if somebody has spoken to her and there is more indication that I'm, I don't have the whole picture and what she wrote, I'm happy to reach out and talk to her. Yeah, I, I hear you saying you're a little unsure about this one. When she reached out at the town fair, she came by the booth and just mentioned that she um, is a professional musician and she's done these shows and she's been doing sh um, shows, I think has done some stuff in Needham um, performances, but kind of wanted a venue and a large broader art audience in Needham. So she she's bringing the um, musical acts and then kind of wants a way to um, outreach. Right. So I, I, there are, I mean, if we did an arts and cultural festival, I could see um, her as right. a great performer for that. If mm -hmm. we um, brought back that piano project with those painted pianos in, in the town square, I could see that as a great um, fit as well. Um, so there's around two thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, uh, you know, on the face value, I think it's a definite no, but my initial thought was, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a real big outdoor music festival in Needham and let her showcase and let Needham, you know, the other thing showcase and let Plugged In showcase and, and really bring it all together. I think this would be a great venue for that, but I'm not sure it's a great venue to fund for $3,000. And she doesn't say where she's gonna get the rest of the money if we don't fund her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, I agree with you, Joni. It'd be great if someone wants to own hosting a music fest, music and arts festival in Needham. I know that's come up before, but I don't feel like her showcasing 10 young adults and a few people with for an hour is, is kind of where we were thinking. Especially because that's ex pretty much exactly what um, the concert society does. It, it, so, but I mean, I'm holding it here and, and I, you know, I wrote no, and then I wrote maybe, and then I wrote confusing. It feels <laughs> but, like a no to me. I think, it, I think if she came back and I, said, I mean, she has to rent a grand piano. She has to correct. get the town to approve it. Like if she comes back with something, I. I mean, to I, me, I, you know, I'd like say, yeah, Joni, maybe you should just follow up with her, keep it in the yellow for now and we'll follow up. Okay, follow I will, but the other, the other, follow, yeah. The other thing is that as I read this, I realized she has to rent a piano, she has to have a stage, she needs sound equipment and none of those expenses were in her proposal. Um, and so, you know, what I wrote was great idea, no planning, no venue, no, no expense. Yeah, no I had the sense when I talked to her that she had done it before in her own neighborhood. So I don't know how that happens, but, and I, I didn't read the application exactly, but okay. maybe follow up with her and then we can move on. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think that's best. Okay. Um, if we can get a little bit more detail and, and specifics. Okay. Um, um, next up is, is the River School Conservatory. And they are asking for $1,500. Pretty much it looks like this is for their operating budget. Um, it's the River Symphony Orchestra and it was founded in 1996. It is a community orchestra comprised of high school and college students, professional musicians, music teachers, community members from interesting Weston, Wellesley, Waltham, Wayland, Framingham, Natick, Lincoln and Medfield. In, a, in an application for a grant from Needham, they don't even, the, the orchestra- The letter was addressed to, to the Weston 
Yeah, they were just copying and pasting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I can put some clarity around this. I think one of their teachers is Ron Lowry, who is one of our yeah. former um, council members. Yeah, he was listed yeah. up there. He is the teacher there and he's a, um, a preeminent cellist in the area and he's teaching there and, and part of the orchestra. So I think that's okay. what the connection to Needham was. Um, they have his name, but they don't even say that he's from Needham. He's just BPL. So my initial inc my initial response to them to this was originally no. And then I said, well, you know, what if we have a couple of families from Needham or something? And now we do have this connection. So maybe, you know, just a, an honorarium kind of gift, but I, I to give them $1,500 when they're not making any effort to connect to Needham. Um, you see it on the low on the public benefit side then. Right, I do. I said no to the Wellesley Symphony just because it doesn't, it's not Needham. I, well, mm -hmm. that's the way I feel about this one. So I think we can knock this one out. I think we can knock this one out. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. The okay. next one. The next one is Needham Concert Society. Um, I said a resounding yes to them. Um, I thought about recusing myself, but I have not been involved with them for 18 years. And I think that's long enough to, um, to be distant. And um, I have gone to their concerts. I think they're fabulous. I think what they do is great. And I think that it gives kids in Needham who take lessons mostly from Needham teachers the chance to showcase their talent at every level from the very beginning students who are playing little tiny songs to the most advanced students. Um, they even invited my kid back when he was in college to do a presentation. Um, so I think they're wonderful and I would love to fund them because okay. they do benefit okay. Nita. Okay, next. The next one is Rehearsal for Life. And this one was very exciting. We have been, we have, um, we have funded them before. They uh, take kids and they have them from concept to writing, to production, to presentation, have them write a musical, a musical or a play. And it is, it's incredible. And they um, are, are, serving all under, under um, served kids to ensure accessibility to the arts. We have a needs blind enrollment policy and provide tuition assistance to aspiring young creatives who wanna learn the craft of theater and be part of an inclusive artistic community. This one actually really excited me. Um, and oh. they're only asking for $350. You know, they no charge brainer. people to be part of the program, right? Yes. Their budget is 204,000 and they're only asking us for $350. And I think what they do, I think sounds, sounds wonderful. And they're based here, good. Yeah, yep. money next week, next. All right, um, so I can go. Um, so I'll start with Arlequin Players Theater. Uh, it's to, I think it's a no. They're being funded through other means. They have like 52K in the bank that will happen with regardless of if we give them money. Um, so my gut is that there's other uh, grants here that that need our money more than, than they do. Um, although we did fund oh. them last year and the year before. Um, so that is one thing that I did want to talk about. Um, if we want to do- going to say what I'm going to say. So yeah. go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think they are an internationally known group. I mean, Mikhail Barishnikov was in their last production. Yeah, I think we should, I think we should, it, we're not talking numbers today. So I would love to give them something so that we keep our name associated yeah. mm -hmm. um, with them because I think it's great that they're based in them. They are yeah. professional. Yeah, and it's rare yeah. to have a professional arts society with their own venue in Needham. So if we give them something, they have to put our label on there. Okay. Um, the Needham Historical Society, uh, this is to have an author come 
uh, to speak about his book. It's going to be a hybrid event uh, live, but then also have it via Zoom. Um, I think that, uh, so we have funded uh, the Needham Post Historical Society twice previously, but not kind of in consecutive years, once back in 2016 and then way back when in 2002. Um, I think this could be interesting and could be an interesting way for us to kind of make those connections again. Um, they're not asking for a lot, um, so I think we could keep them in the mix and, and figure out um, how to support them. I really like the Historical Society. They've got some great insight. I love supporting them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what, Iris. What this particular, this particular program. Oh, it's on the um, uh, history of uh, lighthouses, American lighthouses. Yeah, I love lighthouses. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> Um, so Iris is a student, um, and her uh, grant is for uh, Needham Floral Pop 2021. So it's essentially her creating pop sockets uh, for people in town. Um, so she's using kind of, uh, from my understanding, dried flowers to then create pop sockets that are then initialized um, and provided to, to people around. Um, I think that, um, so she, she did mention that um, if the her full funding amount can't be met that she would just reduce the amount of pop sockets that she would produce I believe her grant said that this would cover ooh, where are my notes um is it I think it was ten dollars each so 70. yeah I think that sounds right um so she would just reduce the the amount of pop sockets purchased um and I think that this is something interesting I know that we've for you know, open studios and that kind of thing have funded for product for things before. Um, and I think that this is an interesting kind of mix between someone's art and then a product. Um, and it's a Needham student and I, I think it could be really cool. Um, she also asked for help um, if we could help her promote it, um, which I think is also a, a nice thing that we could do as a council. What is a pop socket? I, it's one of it's these. It's the thing that kids, oh, you have one. I think yeah. Yeah. it's just to hold, it makes you're holding your phone easier. Oh, oh okay. Elizabeth, you'd need to get one. There's, maybe <laughs> you can sign up and get one. Saying, I kind of wanted one of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you look at her uh, application, oh. there's, or at, in the appendix, there's uh, samples of what they look like. They're beautiful. So they're I think really you, pretty. Yeah, I yeah. would go take a look, but I, I think that's a yes. Um, yeah. Sounds like a, what a great, like out of the box thinking and to come to us. That's fantastic. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. And then my last one was the Museum of American Bird Art at the, um, uh, and they're posting this nature in your neighborhood program. It's four programs, two for adults, two for adults slash families. Um, and it's for Needham residents um, and essentially, you know, using open space to relate back to um, nature and, and that kind of thing. Um, we haven't, I don't believe, have funded them in the past, but I think this is something interesting. Um, my gut was to say, yes, let's fund it, whether or not it's the full amount, I'm not sure. Um, they will, um, uh, a majority of the cost is going to, uh, you know, salaries and, and fees associated with the people hosting um, the events. But um, I think that they're I, I closed right now to renovate their actual space is what's happening. And I think this is a program to keep them yeah. a, a gap while they're, they don't have a home. Yeah. Was my... um, so I voted, I would say yes on this, um, unless others disagree. Okay. Sounds good. And I think, was there one more? Yeah, Bala and I are next, I think. Bala, you wanna go first? Okay. Yeah, so I had reviewed two of them. Um, Sean Fullerton, we can start with that one. Yeah. I think I see it here. So just give me one second. Yep, it's yeah, did, you submit the did you submit the form, Bala? 
Not yet. Should does, does that happen to have, does that have to go first? No worries. Or? It's all good. All right, I can submit it right after. Yeah, that's why um, it's not. That's why you can't find it, um, Julia. Got it. Yeah. All right. Go. So I'll start with Sean uh, Fullerton. Um, so this is going to be um, an acoustic music performance for the senior center population. It's an it's an hour concert. Um, it features feel good blues, soul, rock and roll, folk, Irish, and instrumental music from 1930 to 1970s. Um, I believe we denied this in the past because it was targeting a very specific audience and not a lot of public um, benefit there. Um, but I, you know, my recommendation would be to approve that this time. It was, um, it, they're only asking for 250. Um, and it is benefiting the senior center folks, so. This is the first year we don't have a ton of senior center ones. Like one of yeah. the reasons we denied them in the past is we would have like 15 applications for the senior mm -hmm. center. We have a letter though from the senior center. Yeah. Let me jump in here and then uh, and give a little bit more context. Um, we have three applications this year and last year we had six. Sean Fullerton has been funded in the past. He was funded two years ago. Um, last year he was not funded and he is, uh, is the one that asked the Massachusetts Culture Council to reconsider that denial. Um, mm. He didn't submit the denial in time. That's why we, it didn't come back oh, to the okay. council for reconsideration. Um, so uh, when we contacted the center at the Heights, we asked them to prioritize the three grants that they got. So Bala is reviewing Sean Fullerton um, and he came in second place out of the three. And then um, she has the next one. Yeah, is there's the one more. One. Yeah. Yeah, that's also for the senior center. Um, this is a theatrical performance. It's an interactive, um, this one's the Dell Theater Company. Um, it's an educational production relating to the infamous Fall River native Lizzie Borden, who was tired of the axe murder of her father and stepmother. Um, so basically, it's the story that's being portrayed, um, and the audience will have the opportunity to participate by way of mock trial with the ability to question the defendant and then vote as to her guilt or innocence. Um, so after the performance, uh, the cast will open up. Uh, the cast will open up for discussion regarding. Uh, Lizzie, um, because of the interest in the subject matter and the high turnaround they experienced performing the show, they anticipate a large audience um, and will, you know, work with us. Um, so I believe this was also specifically for the senior center, right? Um, just look over here. And um, they, they did mention that um, if, you know, this could be uh, an event that in person performance are not, per, you know, permitted, it could be a virtual performance. If need be. Where did the senior center uh, personnel put this in the list of three? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, this is their first priority. It has their support yeah. letter from them. They're really excited. They have a bunch of dates that they oh, can book so it. That's their first priority. Yeah. Yeah. And they've, they've done shows in the past, the last two years. Um, I think that the only problem is that. Um, they might have one show that they need to still do, but it is the Meet Julia Childs. I don't know if you guys remember that from last yeah. year. Yeah. What amount are they asking so they're for? Five ninety. And I believe last time we gave a partial amount of two fifty in the past. We don't have to decide money. Okay. Well, they're excited so I, about Lizzie Borden and Forty West. Wow. Yeah, that's surprising. <laughs> So it sounds like uh, both Sean Fullerton and this one are yeses, but we'll figure out amounts yeah. next time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think the last one on the list is Matt York. Is that right? Yeah, that was mine. Matt York was the third on the list. He's doing um, Songs and Stories, The Highwaymen. So that's, um, it would be a musical performance, but um, cover band basically from the, uh, the funny part was that they're in, you know, the music from the 80s, which they said at the senior center is not their cup of tea. They're more like 60 in the 60s. So um, it wasn't something that um, the senior center thought that they could book. Um, I'm not so sure if there's any other venues in Needham. So I would um, 
probably say no to this because I don't see a lot of um, interest in this music for any other venue in Needham that I can think of, unless anybody else has has that on their mind. But we have say- a bunch of local bands that do a very similar thing, like in the summer <laughs> theater, summer summer series. I cannot speak for it. Yeah. Well, we got through all of them, Julia. We did. That's really great. So um, I think we did a lot of the head work. I know it's super late. So you guys did a great job. We'll meet in person on December 14th. And maybe um, for our next steps, we'll sort of um, rainbow that document or like look at all the greens first. Um, and then um, maybe everybody can eyeball follow up with their contacts that they need to maybe guess some numbers. And Julia and I, maybe we can start populating some amounts in there. And so next time we can just um, work on the amounts there. Yeah, um, what I would love is um, I'm gonna clean up this document. Um, I believe everybody should have access to, to view the spreadsheet, but if you don't, just let, let us know. Um, for those who are gonna do some follow-up, just if you could go in and add in any additional information. And then um, what I'll likely do is pull out um, the nose from the list, um, move it into a separate tab so that when we meet next week, we're really only looking at the yeses and the maybes. Awesome. So we'll see everybody in person on December 14th, all that hard work. And thanks to everybody who attended. Bye. Thanks everyone. Take care. Have a good Thanksgiving. Bye. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.